Hi, this is a fasting video, which means I won't be eating any food. I'm not a medical professional and I'm not here to tell you or give you advice on your own health or to tell you what's right or wrong. I'm just documenting my experience. I'm attempting to go 14 days without any food, no calories. And um, I'd like to, to explain like how I feel, how I'm handling what's going on, and also talk a little bit about the different forms of fasting and the research behind it. I wanted to do a video on this, though I don't normally do these kinds of videos, because um, right now fasting is kind of coming into the mainstream. A lot of people are doing like intermittent fasting, and it seems like the body of material of videos, even research, is kind of directed at people in their 20s and 30s, maybe people in their 40s, but that's already kind of, kind of considered getting old for fasting. I'm 64 and I think, you know, fasting for people over the age of 50 is just kind of a guess. I first fasted um, about 20 years ago, it was a three-day fast. Though recently, probably in the last four years, because there has been a lot more research on the benefits of fasting, did I attempt to do the longer fasts. The longest consecutive days that I had gone without eating is seven days. And then um, I did a period of about two, two and a half months where I fasted for five days straight and then took two days off and ate whatever I wanted. So it was basically I fasted during the weekdays and then just took the weekends off. And that had just some incredible health benefits for me, even though on the weekend I was eating just trash, but I'm attempting not to do that now. <laughs> the last long fast I had, I kind of cleared up some arthritis symptoms. I get a little bit of pain in my thumbs here and that went completely away on my last long fast which was like two years ago so I'm due a long one um, and they're starting it's they're starting to creep back some of the pain is starting to creep back but the most astonishing thing that came out of my last long fast is that I, I live in Tokyo and like 30 percent of the population in Tokyo get seasonal hay fever in the spring. And I got really severe symptoms, so much so that I had to kind of double up on some of the medication because the symptoms were very severe. And my last long fast, allergy season showed up and I, I absolutely had zero symptoms. I had no seasonal allergies. And then the second season, season after that, I got a couple of breakthrough days where I my eyes got itchy and I had to take a little bit of medication. So I'm looking, since that's creeping back, I'm looking to, to get a hold of that too so I don't have to die during the month of March and April here in Tokyo. One of the books I will be talking about is called The uh, Diabetes Code and it's written by Dr. Fung and he's a nephrologist. And he had his oldest patient that did a long fast was 71 years old and he fasted for 30 days. And so I thought, well, well, if he can do it, I, you know, I, maybe I could. And so I told my husband, and he's like, don't be an idiot. I've done seven days. Doubling it's probably stretching it enough. What I mean by water fasting is that um, I'll only drink water. I'll take, take in no calories at all. And I'll allow myself one cup of caffeinated coffee a day. And mainly because I found on these longer fasts, there's just times you're a blithering idiot and sometimes just a cup of coffee will get you through. And of course, you're not, I'm not going to have any sugar or cream in it. Um, and then I'll talk about different resources, different books and videotapes and people that fast. And I'll talk about how you can fit fasting into your life and how I deal with the hunger and how I deal with just kind of functioning through the day. So. This is me making dinner about a week before my fast and what my refrigerator looked like at the time. And this is what my refrigerator looks like now. I'm now at the 80 hour point in my fast, about three and a half days, and I'm checking in to let you know how I feel. And I feel like crap, which is pretty much well on schedule for me for fasting. Um, when you read the 
literature or watch videos and stuff on people who fast they a lot of people talk about like a fasting high where the ketones are like fueling their brain and and they feel like really sharp and they love they, they love the way they feel somewhere between the second third fourth day in their fast and I have never found that <laughs> ever <laughs> I always just feel progressively worse till I hit about the third or fourth day and you kind of bottom out there and then you just grit your way through the rest of the fast. So I don't know if that's because of my age or I don't know my, my chemistry or whatever, but I have never, I don't enjoy fasting. One of the things I didn't talk about on the first clip was my numbers and I uh, took my weight, blood pressure, ketones and uh, blood glucose level about a day before I started the fast and then I tracked it all on my for my stationary and fountain pen people I tracked it on my Hobonichi cousins with my pilot custom heritage SE and then I take my um, blood sugar and ketones a couple hours after I get up so I took it this morning and I lost five and a half pounds which most of that is water weight you don't lose that much weight in three days and uh, my ketones were 1.1 and the really dramatic thing is my blood sugar went down from 114 to 89. 114 is pre-diabetic and 89 is solidly into the normal area. My blood pressure also went down. I was 139 over 75 and I went down to 122 over 71. still have pain in my hands, uh, a little bit of pain in my hands from arthritis, but I found all my joints and stuff just feel looser. Today is the middle of my eighth day, Tuesday, and I finished my seventh day this morning, and I'm not feeling so hot. Um, after the third day video, I wanted to do another one, but I just wasn't feeling it. The fourth day was my hardest. I was the hungriest then, and a lot of my normal fasting symptoms came up, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, let me give you my numbers since I measured them on the 7th uh, this morning. I uh, went down 11 pounds total from the beginning, but I'd count on like five of it being like water weight. And my ketones are 4.4 and my glucose is uh, 73. So that went down like 41 points. My blood pressure is 130 over 80, which is still high, but um, I think part of it, the stress of fasting is making my blood pressure run higher. What are these bad side effects that I get <laughs> from fasting? Uh, one of them is hunger, and people talk about you don't feel hungry on on fast it's just mental and you don't feel physical hunger and I, I disagree for me. The symptoms I get from being hungry are like hunger pangs and kind of a, a tightness in my stomach that makes me almost feel nauseous. It got so bad that I wanted to drink a cup of coffee every day or some tea or herbal teas to kind of get me through the day and my stomach just couldn't take it. It was like a gut bomb. It just made my stomach feel worse. And I've also developed something I haven't had before. It's a little bit of an upset stomach. I'm also developing a little bit of lower back pain and I think that's from not enough exercise. I'm just not moving around as much as I normally do. And then another side effect is that, you know, I'm much weaker so that my exercises are really taking it out of me. A side effect for me when I'm fasting is it's just really hard to sleep. Usually if I only do like a one day fast or something like that, that's not really a problem. But anytime I go over that, I don't know if it's the cortisol that's got you hyped up or maybe you're just hungry. I'm not really sure why, but I have a lot of problems sleeping, but it's just like magnified. I'm probably running off about two to four hours of sleep every night. And I lay down to go to sleep and I can't. I toss and turn, toss and turn. And then I'd usually get up and just pace the house like some sort of caged animal, just back and forth, back and forth, and uh, um, just to kind of work off the excess like energy. I'd like to talk too a little bit about just the spiritual side of fasting. I think when you stop something as primal as eating, a lot of your other barriers come down. And um, usually about the fourth day on, 
I think about things like, you know, I'm, I'm not eating because it's a choice. I can just, you know, if I decide I don't want to do that, go across the street and get a sandwich. But, you know, many people in the world, it's not. And you think about, like, people with full bellies that have never missed a meal in their life tell people with empty bellies how to run their lives. And it really kind of guts me a little bit. I think there just needs to be more compassion in my life. I'm not going to go off and like sell my stuff and give all my money to charity or something. But definitely, like I've been asleep at the wheel on the health train. And so this is my correction back. And the same thing is like, I think we need kind of regular updates to think about things beyond ourselves. And of course, people go to church or they meditate or whatever to achieve that. And certainly those are really great things. But I think when I'm fasting, my brain kind of asks myself questions it normally wouldn't. And so I think a little more deeply about things like that. And compassion is, is something I think I need to integrate more into my life. And I think maybe everybody does. And you're thinking, well, why are you giving these numbers? And this is a health thing. Why are you talking about spiritual stuff? But basically, it's an integral part of why I fast, too. I, I think it's, you know, the whole mind-body thing. You've got to feel okay about yourself, too, along with getting yourself healthy. So it is something that kind of is a, it's an integral part of fasting for me. And since I talked about the bad things about fasting, so far in seven days, I haven't totally gotten rid of all the stiffness in my thumbs from arthritis, but I've gotten rid of all the pain. So my, my you know, my thumbs just, they don't, they don't feel painful, and that's happened in seven days. Another odd thing is that my eyes, probably in the last six months or so, have been getting red a lot. I just figured that was part of getting old. Your eyes just get red a lot. And uh, I have noticed now that they're, they're not red anymore. On the very first clip that I did, I had to put some eye drops in my eye because they were just really red. And then I have a, a rash on my leg and um, it, it's almost cleared up. And you're thinking, well, you know, rashes go away, but this one's been around for a while and it's starting to clear up. So just been little odd things like that that kind of make me feel like that some of the autophagy and stuff is kicking in. I said I would give a few resources and so I kind of like to talk a little bit about that. Fasting has really unbelievably been researched a lot. Um, Walter Longo, he's the uh, director of USC Longevity Institute and he's like a cell biologist and he's done a lot of like experiments on rats and stuff on longevity with fasting. And he does something that's called fasting mimicking, which is supposed to be a lot easier. I think they, their average calories is like 900, but they go up and down. And he does it at five times, uh, five times a, for five day periods. But the interesting things for that's that's come out of that is like they're looking at a protocol of like if you have cancer, and then he has they have a protocol of like fasting three days prior to your chemotherapy and the day after, and that is supposed to help you recover from the actual. Uh, side effects of chemotherapy, which I think is pretty, pretty shocking that maybe it's not well as well known. Dr. Yoshinori Osumi um, is a Japanese doctor, and he won the Nobel for medicine and physiology uh, for researching autophagy. And autophagy is where, uh, particularly when you're fasting, but it happens during different parts, you know, like of your day if you're not eating, and uh, it basically. It, it means self-eating and it, it takes old and damaged cells and takes them apart and reuses them and so that's supposed to help a lot with like longevity and health so um, he actually won a Nobel on that and that kind of like really made the whole uh, fasting thing and kind of gave it a kickstart. There's the Buschinger Wilhelmi a clinic in Germany. I went in Germany and in Spain, and you know, I have, I don't have, I've never been there, and I'm not necessarily interested in going there. But they put a lot of interesting videos because they're kind of fasting experts. People go to their clinic and fast, and uh, I'll post a video where they tell you that you're not going to be hungry and fasting. And though I disagree with them on that, they have a lot of interesting things about fasting, and I'll post that.
Dr. Fung, who's a nephrologist in Canada, wrote the book called The Diabetes Code. I read that and that kind of really got me a lot more knowledgeable about fasting. I kind of trusted him because he's like, he, he supervises a lot of people to fast to get them where their diabetes is better and then consequently their kidneys. He has a YouTube channel and he, he breaks it down where it's really simplified so you can understand it a lot better. And I'll put that in the notes. If you're like a bodybuilder or something or you are into keto, uh, Thomas DeLauer's channel has uh, keto videos, but he also talks about more of the shorter fasting, like intermittent fasting, um, 12, 24, 36 hour fasting, and maybe a 72 hour one. You may have heard of the Bulletproof Diet by Dave Asprey, and they basically fast with like a cup of coffee every day with like butter and MCT oil in it. And he has a book out called Fast This Way, and though I'm, I'm not doing that fast, it just has a lot of good information in it, I, and I don't do with the coffee, with the oil. Another good book that's overall just kind of interesting about more cutting edge uh, science on, on uh, eating or nutrition that's kind of more where it's, it's accessible is uh, Eat Smarter by Sean Stevenson. You know, just I'll put that in the notes. And then another channel, YouTube channel, is Dr. Hyman. He, and he has interviewed like Dave Asprey and Dr. Fong and a lot. Of, I think he might have even interviewed um, Walter uh, Longo. And he's kind of a, he's a functional medicine doctor and um, he has a lot of interesting things. It's not all about fasting, but he does include fasting. There's just gobs of resources. This is just stuff off the top of my head while I'm not functioning completely properly. And um, it's kind of, I don't know how many more clips I'm going to do before the end because uh, I'm struggling a little bit. I think on the fourth day, I'd really seriously thought that maybe I should quit. Uh, but I wanted to get more information out. What are the things I'm looking at in, to stop the fast, which I think it might be unsafe or whatever. And I check my blood pressure about five times a day, pr pretty often. And if I see a really sudden spike in blood pressure, or a really big drop in blood pressure, I'm going to stop. If I see um, any weird, if I have like heart palpitations or something, I'm going to stop. I'm going to be worried about maybe my mineral balance or something. If I like stand up and get dizzy, I'm going to stop. Uh, I, I do when I stand up, it's like I feel weak, I don't feel good, but I don't feel dizzy. So if I have any of those kind of things, I'm, I'm going to stop. And if I feel like I'm just really feeling terrible, then I'm going to stop. But right now I'm dealing with a lot of things that just kind of make the whole day kind of miserable. Between the hunger pangs and having a little bit of an upset stomach, having lower back pain, and having this excess weird energy and then getting no sleep at all. Uh, I, you know, those are just kind of all day long crappy <laughs> things. But um, we'll see how much longer I go. It'll be eight days and then after that, I'm gonna you know, monitor myself closely so I'm not doing anything incredibly stupid. This is day 14 of my fast, so uh, tomorrow morning at 10.30 uh, in the morning I'll break my fast. And I kind of want to recap what happened in the last seven days. Uh, day eight was particularly tough. Some of the um, bad like, symptoms you know you get from fasting, what I got on this one was just occasional very small headaches. I had lower back pain that had eventually went away. You're tired so you have to kind of really pace yourself. Then I you know I have occasional hunger pangs and I work my way through that just kind of deep breathing and maybe um, drinking some colder water that seems to help a little bit. And then the ones that I oh yeah and then you have like monster breath. I mean it's insane. I mean I brush my teeth Mainly, I brush my tongue about ten times a day. It's really, it's really scary. But the two things that I have the most problem with, and, and the reason why I am going to end my fast of fourteen days instead of going any further, is that um, I just lack of sleep. Um, going on average about two to three hours a night, 
And then last night I had about four hours of sleep, which made me feel better, a lot better today. That, and when I don't get enough sleep, I just know from my history, my blood pressure goes up because it's stress on my body. And the other thing, which I'd never had before, was just a slight feeling of nauseous, not nausea that would come and go. And the eighth day, it was particularly bad. I think everything that bothered me kind of happened at once. I had a slight headache, I was tired, um, my lower back hurt, and um, yeah, I just started feeling a little bit nauseous. And I'm like, I don't know if I can go any further. On the 14th day today, I don't feel any nausea at all. So I kind of worked my way through it. So about the only thing I have left now is the feeling of tiredness and not getting enough sleep and occasional hunger pangs. You should break your fast slowly. And one of the important things when you have a longer fast like mine is you pretty much will kill everything in your, in, your, in your gut. I mean, good, bad bacteria or whatever. So you want to reintroduce um, the good bacteria. So first I need to kind of climatize my digestive system so I'll start out at 10.30 drinking a cup of bone broth and I'll just use this pretty good brand uh, package one just because I don't have it in me to drink cold bone broth today. And then I'll probably wait about an hour and make sure I'm all climatized and then have a bowl of um, this chicken soup which has like a free range chicken in it and like you know all kinds of vegetables and it'll be mineral rich which will be good and then um, some kimchi uh, they suggest that you break your fast with cooked vegetables first because um, they, they're easier to digest so that's what the chicken soup is and then I really want to repopulate my um, gut biome with good bacteria and also set up a good environment for it so I gotta absolutely not eat crap this week and so like no sugar and I you know, like you know um, vegetable oils or stuff I need to eat non-inflammatory foods too and then for dinner I'll probably have like some natto or miso and you know, to kind of start repopulating my gut biome and then probably have a salad that will be my first raw vegetables. So today I'm prepping that. I might take some like little short clips of that and then that's how I'll break it uh, tomorrow. On the last clip I talked about different resources but one that I forgot was Dr. Mindy. She's a YouTube channel and what's good about her is like the fasting world is pretty much all dominated by men. They've kind of, uh, there's just um, a lot more men that are doing fasting protocols than women. But she is um, very supportive. I mean, you can be a man and go to her uh, channel and learn a lot of stuff. But she's like does specific targeted videos for women. And then she has, I think, like a Facebook group where they do fasts together. So it's very supportive and you can learn a lot. So I'll also include that. One of the things that kind of helps you um, with this fasting is that you kind of lose interest in a lot of stuff. I mean, I think your body's on survival mode. So I think what helped me is that I have a long established hobby and that kind of takes me out of this whole mindset of I'm trying to be healthy, I'm trying to be healthy. And mine is fountain pens. And as long as you don't get really detailed and, and get caught up in the minutia, it's very relaxing and I found that to be true. I even put out a video um, yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. <laughs> but um, yeah, it took me like forever to edit because I would edit for 15 minutes and then pace the house and then lay on the floor and you know it was a very long process but it did take me out uh, of the kind of the intense moment you are in when you're fasting so that's something that you may want to rely on as kind of a hobby it's one of my fear things is to appear on YouTube and I, this is like my first time on my channel that I'm um, I'm actually on one of my videos and if you're interested in fountain pens and my only other one that I am on is um, 
Apple Boom asked to do like the three top pens and here I'll, I'll, I'll link it here um, I did like a top three and and talked about my top favorite fountain pens but it, it was a little scary and and this video is very scary for me so um, it's part of the whole you know try to get out of your comfort zone thing I think not eating for 14 days is really getting out of my comfort zone so if you're interested in um, fountain pens or stationery or just a little bit about Japan you might want to check out my channel for like the real me <laughs> and I also forgot to add like some of the things that will help you get through some of your symptoms and for like feeling hungry I I found a few things that helped me one is believe it or not it's just deep breathing if you just focus and you, know, you can do like what's called triangle breathing breathing in for uh, a certain number of counts you can pick you know and three seconds, 15 seconds or whatever, but you breathe in a certain amount of time, the same amount of time you hold your breath and then the same amount of time you exhale. And then square breathing is a lot like that where you breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, hold it, breathe out and hold it. And you do them all for the same amount of uh, seconds. And that, that, I don't know if you just get your mind into breathing so you don't think about being hungry, that helps sometimes. Um, Sometimes just uh, just sitting there and thinking about being hungry and just really noticing how your body feels, like where are you tense at when you're hungry, that helped. Um, also, ice water helped me a little bit, just drinking a little bit of ice water. And then I found light pacing helps me. Anytime it's an incline, I feel tired, but I've probably worn the carpet out in my house, just pacing back and forth. and. Um, you know, those are kind of the little tools that I use for helping combat hunger. The rest of the video is going to be about uh, breaking my fast. So um, I, I want to kind of cover this now. Some of the things I've thought about on my health is I finally just have to wrestle the demon sugar. I, I got to get a handle on it. If you look up inflammatory foods on the internet, you get a different list. Nobody agrees on what's inflammatory foods, but the one thing they do agree on is um, sugar. A lot of them agree on vegetable oils that they're inflammatory, but sugar's on all the lists. Okay, after the 14 days is up, I got up that morning and made um, some chicken soup for myself to break my fast and. My husband did a three and a half day fast. He just finished up with me. And this is him taking his first sip of bone broth. All right, that's pretty good. He measures his blood oxygenation level. It puts a little thing on at night on his finger. And um, he said his oxygenation rate was a lot higher. And he also felt like he got over some back aches and pains a lot quicker. Uh, through fasting. I don't know how to do a selfie, so this is kind of a selfie of me having my bone broth. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> About an hour after I had my bone broth and kind of got my digestive system situated, I had my first meal and it was homemade chicken and vegetable soup. And then to repopulate my gut biome, I had some kimchi too. And then about seven hours after that meal, I had my first whole complete meal. And in here I have uh, some salad. So that's the first non-cooked vegetable I'll be eating. And then miso soup, which again, to help populate my gut biome, kimchi again, to populate my gut biome. And then um, asparagus, which is considered a good prebiotic. And then I had some natto, which is fermented soybeans, and they're supposed to be like a super food. And if you want any uh, tips on how to eat natto, if you just eat a plain, it's pretty awful. But um, it's really, really good for your gut biome, and along with some onions, which is a prebiotic. I ate way too much. I know some of these seasoned fasters are going, why did she eat so much on her first meal? I'm like, because I was hungry <laughs> and I wanted to eat it, but it just took forever to digest. 
Uh, I mean, I just like I felt full for like eight hours after. It just took forever to digest. So uh, I probably hopped into way too much food. And the surprise thing was on the 14th day, uh, my blood sugars went back up to 112. So I started out at 114 before I did my 14 day fast. And then it went down to 89 and 73 on the third and seventh day. But then on the 14th day, it was back up at 112. But my ketones were a sky high 6.2. You need to worry if you. I think if your ketones go higher than 7 and your blood sugar goes less than 50. So, And my blood pressure was down to 121 over 80 and I started out at 139 over 75 so um, it's a little bit better. Um, I don't think it was that much of a big deal. And this is where a lot of people have kind of click baby titles. In 14 days as a 64 year old woman I lost 17.6 pounds and that's what I weighed less on the 14th day compared to the day before I started the fast. But I didn't lose that much weight. And if you read Dr. Fung, he talks about you can average around a half a pound of real fat loss per day that you fast. So at 14 days, I should have only lost seven pounds and it's showing 17 because I still have probably another six pounds of water weight to get back on. But, you know, it's like I said, it's very eye-catching. She lost 17.6 pounds in two weeks. Like, no, you really didn't. You, you did some weird stuff to your body and that's your body's reaction. The difference is I have been at this weight before and I haven't got the kind of results I have now. Yeah, my blood sugar is still high so I'm going to need to talk to my doctor about that. It did, and my blood pressure went down a little but I'm, I'm not so sure it's even worth fasting for 14 days. The main reason I fasted is I wanted to get rid of a lot of the inflammation in my body and that was gangbusters. I had pain in my thumbs but not only did the pain go away, my hands are just so much more loose and I just feel so much more comfortable. I don't have any kind of stiffness when I get up in the morning. It's just, it really reduced inflammation in my body. Like I said, I had a, a rash. I've had that for, I don't know, five or six years. And that was probably the most eye-opening thing to my family. They're all going, man, your rash is gone. I can't tell if, you know, this is going to work during the allergy season. And we'll have to see. And I'm going to try to probably do another couple, like two day fast or something before allergy season to get myself ready. And that'll be the real the telling thing whether or not this worked for me. But already I feel like it was the health aspect of it and, and just feeling better was worth it. And I think the area of concern for me right now is I still have semi high, high ish blood glucose. And like I said, I'm going to talk to my doctor about how I can approach it. And how I'm thinking about approaching it is I have way too little muscle mass and that's part of it so I need to get back in the gym so I'll be sore for the next <laughs> couple of months as I overdo it in the gym and then I also want to um, uh, cut sugar out. Okay, if you're interested in um, seeing what my follow-up program is or if I do like a two or three day fast if, if a few are interested in me walking through something like that uh, let me know in the comments and then as far as my age what I felt was different about fasting now and I think the sleep was the worst part. Uh, when you get older you start you start having all kinds of little stupid problems but one of them is, is sleep. It's hard to stay asleep through the night and it's hard to get enough sleep and it was super compounded by this long fast and so I think that's one of the differences as you get older you're going to have to really attack the sleep angle of it and how I could probably have done it is maybe when I got up in the morning go outside and get some sun into my eyes to kind of set my circadian rhythm, get some exercise done first thing in the morning instead of waiting till later. So those that was tougher. Being older, it was tougher trying to deal with the loss of sleep. I don't remember that being the case like say 20 years ago of having a hard time sleep. And I think another one was that my stomach seems to be a lot more sensitive to a, a, a juggling my stomach issues seemed to be harder as I was older. And then also I felt like I got tired faster. And that might be again from lack of muscle mass. But I felt like, like just getting up and doing stuff, my heartbeat would get a lot faster and I just was weaker. So I felt like that was a, more of a problem on this long fast here. So I made it through 14 days. I met some goals, some of them I didn't. Um, and as, as anything in life, it's a continuing thing. This is just something I was trying to do to get me back on the path toward health and hopefully I'll stay on it and maybe I'll check in with you later to see if I have. At the time that I'm posting this video, it's been about two weeks since I finished my fast and I did go see my doctor with my numbers and he explained that that jump 
in uh, my blood glucose toward the end there was because my body was super stressed and it probably was a really good time to stop my fast as maybe I was getting a diminishing margin of returns there. And he has me just for information purposes checking my blood sugar every day for 30 days and he'd like to see most of the numbers stay below 100. And after sitting on this for two weeks, the greatest gift I got from this 14-day fast was just a super wake-up call that I really have gone off the tracks on my health. So now I'm shaking all the time because I'm just working out so hard in the gym and I've gone back to a 16-8 intermittent fasting and I'm, I haven't had any, any sugar at all. I, I think this, I just don't want to do this 14-day thing again.